So one thing I'd like to know is, do these planets have mountains? I always love these, or sucker for these big fantasy novels of these huge mountainous landscapes in the front. I'd love to have an exoplanet with enormous mountain ranges, 100 times bigger than anything on Earth. Well, we know that the mountain ranges on Earth are formed by plate tectonics, where, for example, you know, the Indian subcontinent goes into Asia and produces the Himalayas, or volcanoes. Those can make uh, big uh, mountains here on Earth, or Olympus Mons, for example, on, in, on Mars. For all these things, we need a molten interior of the Earth. And of course, the planets start off hot with lots of lava, but as you'd imagine, that with, as time went on, they'd cool down and solidify, as has happened to a large extent on the Moon. What keeps the Earth molten inside is actually trace amounts of things like uranium inside it. There aren't very much of it mixed in with it, but there's enough that as it decays, the nuclear f fusion, it generates heat and keeps the inside of the Earth very molten, and therefore allows us to still be having volcanoes and plate tectonics you know, 4.6 billion years after it formed. Yeah, and so I think there's pretty good reasons to believe that most planets will have some of that radioactivity because when we look across the Milky Way, uh, most of the relatively young stars have similar abundances of things like uranium to uh, our own sun. And so that uranium is always going to be sort of part and it tends to, through chemical processes, conglomerate in one spot where we expect the Earth to be. But there is the chance, because we think the the process, which is called the rapid process of uh, neutronization, uh, probably occurs in very funny mergers of neutron stars, like we talked about in one of the uh, earlier courses. And that process will produce large amounts of uranium sometimes. So there's probably stars that have huge amounts of gold and uranium and all sorts of other interesting things. So they would have a very liquid crust compared to ours, really hot and uh, stay hot for a long time. So the idea that one of these particular supernovae would, might go off and um, given time, the stuff it squirts out would get mixed thoroughly in that's where we come from. But maybe you get a giant molecular cloud right near one of these things and get yeah. a really heavy dose of these heavy elements and any planets that formed out of that would be quite interesting. Right, and so one of the other interesting things to think about is that we talk about uh, the idea of super-Earths. These are bigger ones, so you're going to have the same surface area, a slightly larger surface area, much bigger volume, and so that radioactivity, which is keeping the thing hot, is going to work better in the super-Earths than the Earths. So do you think that would be a place to go look for huge volcanoes and huge Himalayas? Well, there is a problem with this. Um, it turns out that you actually can't make mountains much bigger than Mount Everest on Earth, simply because rock isn't strong enough. I mean, Mount Everest is, what, just under 10 kilometers high, and if you tried to make it near twice as big, the pressure of all that rock would actually liquefy the rock at the bottom and cause it to flow away. So it turns out that on Earth, unless you start building mountains out of diamonds or something, you really can't make things much more than about 10 kilometers high, no matter what you do in the way of volcanoes. And so maybe on the super Earths, the gravity is going to be much stronger, and so even though you've got huge amounts of volcanoes and lava and so on, maybe it can't do anything. Let's actually calculate uh, how limiting this effect of gravity is on the formation of mountains on different sorts of planets. Okay, so let's imagine we have a planet and there's a mountain. And the planet pulls on the mountain with some force F. And we know there's a limit to the force beyond which the mountain's going to blob away and become molten and disappear. Now the force is going to be given by g m of the planet, m of the mountain over r squared, where r is the distance from the centre of the planet to the mountain, so it's the radius of the planet. And we know that that's going to give us a limited size. So we can imagine that the height of the mountain is going to be proportional to 1 over this force. So the bigger the force, the smaller the mountain. So it's going to be proportional to r squared over the mass of the planet. So that's telling us that large planets should have bigger mountains. In fact, if you go twice, planets go twice as big, the mountain should go four times as large. Does that work? Well, not really. Um, the big planets seem to be, in our own solar system, like Jupiter, have no mountains at all. Um, it's small planets like Mars that have big mountains. So what's going wrong here? Well, it's probably this mass down here. Uh, if you assume, for example, that all planets have the same density, so you're looking at, say, rocky planets, then mass is going to be the volume 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density. 
so that's proportional to r cubed. So that means that the height of a mountain is proportional to r squared over r cubed, proportional to 1 over r. So if we've got uniform density, it seems that, in fact, the small places should have, small planets should have bigger mountains. Does this work? Well, here is uh, Olympus Mons on Mars. Uh, Mars is a radius three times smaller than the Earth, and indeed the biggest mountain Olympus Mons is about three times higher than Mount Everest. Even smaller things, like this asteroid 433 Eros, have even bigger lumps on them. In fact, you could almost say one definition of a asteroid is something small enough that the mountains can be the same size as the asteroid itself, so they look significantly non-spherical. <laughs>